Hi everyone, I'm Yulian Li from Google. Today I'm going to introduce Sundial, a fault-tolerant clock synchronization scheme for data center. This is a joint work between Google and Harvard. Synchronized clocks are very useful in data centers. They can greatly simplify or improve existing applications, such as distributed databases and getting consistent snapshots. There are many famous examples, such as Spanner from Google, and farm from Microsoft. They can also enable new applications, such as network telemetry, measuring one-way delay, and distributed logging and debugging. We believe there will be more applications if we really have the synchronized clocks that can tightly bound the precision. Unfortunately, most traditional clock synchronization schemes only provide best effort. They don't provide a bound on how large different clocks can drift away. And this bound is actually the key metric in production. It's usually called the time uncertainty bound, which is introduced by the true time into the production. And it's very important for the correctness of applications. I will use an example of the weight operation in distributed systems to show why it's important. The intuition is that one server may read a value x at the local time t. The x may be a shared variable, so another server may also write to it. Since the clock of the two servers may be different, the server 2 may write to value x later, but with an earlier timestamp. And this can cause inconsistency. A simple solution is for the server 1 to wait for some time until it is guaranteed that all servers must have passed t, and then it will read the value x. So the key question is how long it has to wait. If it's not long enough, it can cause mistakes in applications, and it's unacceptable because it can affect billions of users. So we must have a time uncertainty bound to decide how long to wait, and this bound must guarantee the correctness. We not only need a bound, we also need a very tight bound. This is because with the technology in both the network and on the server, the latency has reduced to microsecond level. So the time uncertainty bound starts to become the bottleneck. A recent study shows that even 10 to 20 microsecond um, time uncertainty bound still cause 25% extra latency at median. So we designed Sundown to provide 100 nanosecond level time uncertainty bound, even under failures. And this is two to three orders of magnitude better than existing designs. So let me briefly introduce how existing solution works. They involve several design choices. The first is to calculate the offset between two clocks. This can be done by exchanging messages. The offset can be calculated uh, with the sending time plus the one-way delay minus the receiving time. We can now measure one-way delay directly, so we usually use the RTT to estimate it. Then the next question is how to send messages. Many solutions send a message over multiple hops, but this, is a prob this has a problem because the delay can be variable and asymmetric. This is because the forward pass and the reverse pass can be different, and there are queuing that can cause a variable delay. So the best practice is to send messages only between neighboring devices. And this brings a fixed and a symmetric delay. This is between a pair of clocks. Then given a network of clocks, the common practice is to structure them into a spanning tree, and the root will distribute a clock value along the edges of the tree. Finally, we cannot just do this once because clocks can drift apart over time. This is because they are driven by oscillators and the frequency of oscillators can change over time. So we have to periodically synchronize the clocks. Therefore, the time uncertainty bound is also a periodic function. When we read uh, at a time now, the value of uh, time uncertainty bound depends on two factors. 
The first factor is how long it has been since the last time it gets synchronized. And the second factor is how fast the clocks can drift away. We will show that both factors can be very large because of failures. Specifically, there are frequency-related failures that can change the frequency of oscillator and cause large drift. And there are connectivity failures that can um, stop the synchronization for a long time. Since the time uncertainty bound consists of the product of the two factors, no existing solutions can provide a very tight bound. Now let's dive into the details one by one. The clocks are driven by oscillators, so they can drift away because the oscillator frequencies change with temperature and the voltage. For example, from the spec of an oscillator in production, it shows the frequency can vary over a range of plus or minus 100 ppm over a range of temperature. Here, 100 ppm means it can drift by 100 microsecond per second. And there are many failure cases that can cause frequency variations, such as cooling failures, fires in data centers, and voltage fluctuations. So we have to set maximum drift rate very conservatively. In fact, in Google True Time, it is set to 200 ppm. The reason is that we must guarantee correctness. So you may ask, what if we can set it aggressively? Actually, we had such experience before when we said the maximum drift rate is smaller. But when a cooling failure happened, it affects thousands of machines, and we get a huge number of clock-related errors. So the implication of setting a conservative max drift rate is that if we want to provide a tight bound, the interval between synchronization must be small. So we must have very frequent synchronization. But the, but the frequent synchronization alone is not enough, because there are switch or link failures that can break the connectivity of the spanning tree and cause a long time period of no synchronization. For example, if this link goes down, we need a controller to reconfigure the spanning tree, which can take a long time. So this node will have to report a large time uncertainty bound during the failure. But this is not the only problem, because not only B, but also the whole subtree are affected by the same failure. But existing protocols try to continue synchronize uh, the clocks within the subtree. So this node in the subtree, they do not notice the failure that is remote. Therefore, to guarantee correctness, they have to report a large time uncertainty bound all the time. And this is terrible. Now how large the time uncertainty bound is depends on how fast the connectivity failure is recovered. So we must have fast recovery from the connectivity failures. So we design Sundown to achieve the two key requirements based on a hardware software co-design. To have frequent synchronization, we implement in the hardware the message sending, processing, and also failure detection. To achieve fast recovery from the connected failures, we use a software hardware co-design. The intuition is that the hardware can report a failure very quickly to the local software, and the software can immediately enable a backup plan by reconfiguring the hardware. And this is very fast because it's pure local. The backup plan is pre-computed by the controller. This can be slower, but it's not on the critical path. So now let's look at the details of the hardware and the software. In the hardware, we have three key aspects. The first is that we send frequent messages every around 100 microseconds. And because of this, we can also detect failure very fast with a small timeout. For example, if this link goes down, then this node stops receiving message. So it will, uh, it will get a timeout. But remember, we also have other nodes 
that are farther away from the failure. And they also need to detect the failure. So we use synchronous messaging to help the remote failure detection. The synchronous messaging means one node only sends a message out when it receives one. That's why it's called synchronous. With the synchronous messaging, when a failure happens, the whole subtree under the failure all stopped receiving messages. So all nodes under the subtree will get timeout. Then to recover the failure, all nodes just turn to that uh, turn to their backup parents to reform a new tree that recovers the connectivity. All of these are pure local actions, so they are very fast. The backup parent is pre-computed by the controller. So now let's look at how the controller pre-compute the backup plan. It consists of a backup parent per device. For each node, there are multiple options for the backup parent. For example, the red node has two options, denoted by the right red arrows. But not every option works. For example, under this failure, option one works. But under this failure, option one doesn't work. On the other hand, option two works for both cases. That means the actual failure may affect the choice of backup parent. But since the device cannot distinguish different failures, that means we must design the backup plan to be generic to different failures. Specifically, it has to be generic to any single link failure, any single device failure, and the root failure, which is also special. And beyond single failures, there can be concurrent failures caused by some fault domain failures, such as rack failure, pod failure, or power failure, in which multiple devices or links can go down. So we also have to be uh, generic to fault domain failures. In this talk, I will only focus on the root failure and the fault domain failures, but all the four types are discussed in our paper. Because of that, the backup plan has two parts. The first is one backup parent per device, as we discussed, and also a backup root to handle the uh, to handle the root failure. The backup root is a special node because it will elect itself as the new root when it detects the root fails. But on the other failures, it should behave as a normal node. The key question is how to distinguish the root failure from other failures. It's not straightforward because, um, for example, the backup root cannot simply distinguish the link failure from the root failure because all it sees is that it stops receiving messages. Our key idea is to get independent observation from other nodes. By independent observation, we mean some other node that can observe the root independently from another subtree of the root. So we set the backup parent of the blue node to some node in the other subtree. In this way, when non-root failure happens, the blue node continues receiving message along this, this path. But when root, ha root failure happens, there will be no messages. This is because most of the node send a message synchronously. Right? Only the node, only the root can send a message spontaneously. So if the root is down, there will be no messages. With this intuition, we can easily detect root failure. And we use a second timeout on the backup root so that it can elect itself as the new root. Besides the root failure, we also handle the fault domain failures. This is special because one domain may break the one domain failure may break the connectivity of a node, so the node will turn to its backup parent. But if the same domain also takes down the backup parent, then it cannot recover from the failure. So in the calculation, we also 
have to avoid this case for every node. In evaluation, we run Sundial in a testbed with more than 500 servers and more than 200 switches. We compare with the state-of-art solutions. Since they don't provide the time uncertainty bound, we also add a calculation of time uncertainty bound to them. We test them under different scenarios, uh, including the normal time when there is no failures, and also under the case when we inject failures. During the normal time, we show the distribution of the time uncertainty bound. And we can see that Sundial have two orders of magnitude lower time uncertainty bound than all other schemes. But even, uh, even the maximum value is only 43 nanoseconds. During the failure, we zoom into the details by looking at the time series of the time uncertainty bound. And we take an example of a link failure. Other failures are very similar. We can see that Sundial consistently bound the time uncertainty below 100 nanoseconds, which is more than two orders of magnitude lower than other schemes. We also decompose Sundial uh, into multiple design choices, and then we show how they improve the time uncertainty bound one by one. The baseline is PTP, and we add a frequent message on top of it, which bring down the time uncertainty bound by an order of magnitude. But it cannot bring it further because, um, because the, they cannot, devices cannot notice the failures that is remote, so they have to report a high value all the time. Then we add a synchronous messaging, which can help the device to detect remote failures, so they can safely report a small time uncertainty bound when there's no failures. But when failures do happen, the time uncertainty bound still grow large because the controller takes a long time to recover. Finally, by adding the backup plan, we consistently bound the time uncertainty at a very low level. We also show that Sundial can improve application performance. In Spanner, the commit with latency can be improved by three to four times. And in Swift congestion control, we show that it has 60% higher throughput under reverse pass congestion. Beyond that, we are also working on more applications using Sundown. In conclusion, we show that time uncertainty bound is a key metric in production, and existing solutions fall short because of failures. So we design Sundown based on a hardware software co-design. In the device hardware, we implement frequent messages, synchronous messaging, and a fast failure detection. And the device software can very fast, uh, very fast recover from failures based on a local backup plan. The backup plan is pre-computed by the controller. With Sundial, we built the first system that can achieve 100 nanosecond level time uncertainty bound. And we also show uh, we also show improvement on real applications. Finally, I have one key message for you. Even if you don't remember the talk, please remember that when you write code in the future, you can reliably use a clock and it's tight bound for your critical distributed systems. Thanks for listening.